a glossary would typically contain key terms and definitions of a subject area, for example this theatre glossary. With a Moodle glossary you can browse by alphabet, category, date or author and you can also search for particular key terms. Because Moodle encourages collaboration, students can add terms to a Moodle glossary, so you could create a glossary where they can build their knowledge together. Let's make a glossary in our Moodle course. To do that, we need to turn the editing on, either by clicking the Turn Editing On button top right, or by scrolling down and in the Administration block, clicking the link Turn Editing On. Then in the section where we'd like our glossary, I'm going to add mine to the writing section, we click the link Add an activity or resource. This brings up the activity chooser. Glossary is an activity because the learners interact with it and so we can click it twice to open it straight up or once to get some information about ideas for using the glossary and then once at the Add button at the bottom to add it. The name is important because this is what the learners will see on the course page. In the description, add the instructions that you want to give them for adding their key terms. You can display the description on the course page if you want to by checking the box. There are many other settings and you can find out about these and explore them by clicking the links. So for example if we click entries we can decide as a teacher whether to allow all entries to appear immediately or whether we want to moderate them first. Whether we want duplicate entries, in other words if two students post the same key term and whether we want to allow them to comment on each other's entries. Linking glossary entries means that if a key term is added to the course page or items within the course, then it's automatically hyperlinked to the glossary entry. This makes use of filters, which we'll look at in a separate video. Likewise, if we click on Appearance, we can decide how we want the glossary to be displayed. For example, how many entries to show per page. Once we're happy with all of these settings, we simply need to scroll down and click Save and Return to Course. But what I'm actually going to do is click Save and Display because that takes me straight to the glossary where we can add our first key term. And we do this by clicking the Add a New Entry button. This is what the learners will do when they contribute to the glossary. For concept, we type the actual word and in definition we type what it means. It's possible to add keywords and also to add attachments such as images to the glossary. And you see that as we go through with each entry we can decide whether it should be automatically linked or not. And whether to match whole words or just parts of words inside the glossary entry. This is quite important to think about. Finally we save the changes and we have a glossary with one entry already there. If you're looking at a glossary it's also worth exploring in the block section the random glossary entry block.